welcome to the WitNet community call for the month of March. My name is Ben and I'm the community manager and the social media lead for the WitNet project. Uh, before we begin, I want to make this uh, make it clear that this is not only for the month of March because we skipped our community call uh, in the end of February because the WitNet team was at uh, the East Denver conference. So this is mainly a call for the month of March, but we'll be covering things that basically happened in the first quarter of 2023 and kind of be uh, summarizing and touching, touching up on, on what happened. Um, first off, I want to thank everyone who joined our actual, actual community call in Discord uh, today. Um, it absolutely failed on YouTube live stream, so we had to migrate to Discord, and, and I'm thankful for the people who uh, came along with us for the migration. Uh, but for those who, who couldn't come uh, and were waiting for the YouTube live stream, um, here's the recording of basically everything we covered during the actual call. Um, for everyone who's new to the community, we have all of the community calls spanning back to about May um, on our blog, which is medium.com slash witnet. So basically just go to that link and then navigate to the monthly reviews panel and you will see all of the community calls for the last pretty much year. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the YouTube comments or join our Discord and Telegram and uh, we'll get you situated. So starting off with the Witty Pixels at ETH Denver. Uh, this is a recap, obviously. The team went to ETH Denver and we were asked to be the official game creators of the ETH Denver organization and the SporkDAO organization. Um, if you're not familiar with the games we ran in the past, we created the Eggs game at LizCon, Witty Creatures at FCC 4 and 5, and Witty Buffacorns at the last uh, ETH Denver. So this game at ETH Denver allowed people to earn pixels by scanning each other's QR code on their in-game badges. These pixels were then placed on a shared art canvas, which was minted as an NFT on Ethereum at the end of the conference. The NFT was sold in a Dutch-style auction where half the proceeds went to charity and half the proceeds went to all the players. This was the largest collaborative NFT creation ever and the largest mobilization of Web3 in the world. So we were really showing the world what we could do um, with this kind of magic internet money. Uh, Witty Pixels had 1,907 players, and they all painted a total of 41,000 pixels. So the final canvas, which is in the bottom right here, uh, sold for 5.2 ETH, and uh, half that went to charity via uh, a partnership that we had with the Giving Block, and then half the uh, proceeds of that uh, auction went to uh, the players. So the top player actually earned 250 US dollars in, in Ether. So ne next up is the network upgrades that we uh, implemented in the last few weeks. Uh, we've been having these discussions for, for months, if not longer, and we posted a long-winded article on our Medium, do uh, Medium blog. So take a look at that if you want a, uh, more of like a long, longer rundown. But we'll just briefly touch on the most important ones, which are uh, WIP 23, 22, and 27. Uh, and then the bottom three is a little bit more uh, tech, tech advanced, but for the sake of this video, we're just going to briefly touch on them. So for, for WIP23, we implemented a burning mechanism that would actually take WITCOIN out of circulation when a node provided false information. Prior to this change, the protocol would redistribute the WIT among nodes that were truthful at a given data request, which presented an attack vector so that malicious nodes might be able to uh, front run and get other nodes to lie uh, and then steal their WIT. So uh, this new mechanism it makes this, make, takes out this incentive. So WIP22 changed the collateral and the reward ratio when a node is fulfilling a data request. Now that, the, now that this is implemented, the collateral of a request can no longer be 125 times greater than the promised reward. So this change helped miners become more efficient, it created greater incentives, and accelerated the price discovery of the Oracle services. WIP27 increased the UTXO age that a um, a node must achieve before they can actually stake their wit as collateral. So prior to this mechanism, this was uh, around 12 and a half hours, but this update changed it so that's now one week prior um, before the, co the coins in an address can be considered for collateral. Um, this just makes the Oracle more resilient to Sybil attacks, which is great. Um, WIP25 added support for more um, data APIs, essentially. WIP24 uh, basically changed how decimals in a given data request are formatted, and then the final WIP, WIP26, introduced a, a protocol level error code. So these are all great changes that we're all super excited about, and since the uh, uh, actual 
uh, first whip, the burning mechanism, there's been over 80, nearly 80,000 whip burned, which is about two weeks, which is great. So protocols now, uh, which is the most important part of the WitNet Oracle, securing protocols. We're currently at 242 million uh, US dollars of total value secured with the WitNet Oracle across 24 blockchains and serving 230 data feeds. We're now gonna touch on some of the most important some of the most important protocols that we've gotten since the start of the year. Um, obviously there's a lot more than this, but uh, we're gonna focus on some more in the next call. So number one, Mare Finance. Total value locked of 175 million. They're on Kava EVM and they're using uh, the price feeds wrapped Kava, DAI, USDT, and USDC, all from the WitNet Oracle. So it's a decentralized non-custodial lending protocol that, um, which something that's really cool is that they'll only work with other projects as long as they work with WitNet. Or the way they explain it to me is that if they're using a loan uh, or liquidity pool from a different uh, project, as long as they're using WitNet price feeds, they'll use the, that project, which is a really cool uh, notion to have as a project like that because it shows how um, how impressed they are with the WitNet Oracle and how important decentralization is to them. So very very cool thing to hear. Next up is QuickSwap. It's the leading DEX on Polygon POS and soon to be on Polygon ZK EVM. Total value locked is 61 million. Uh, they're using the uh, Quick USD, Quick Matic, and Quick ETH price feeds from the WitNet Oracle. Um, they're the leading decks uh, in pretty much in Web3 because of their efficient liquidity pool usage and market making system. Um, and like I said, as far, uh, on QuickSwap V3, they're actually they have a TVL of 61 million. Uh, next up is Toucan Protocol. It's one of the first blockchain-based uh, carbon markets. Uh, a little over half a million in total value locked. That number is um, quickly going up as they have 40 million locked on Polygon. So we're actually supporting them on CeeLo. Hopefully we get we can get there on Polygon with them, but uh, maybe that's, that's a problem for another day. Uh, price feeds that they're getting from the WitNet Oracle is the NCT to USD and NCT to CeeLo. Um, so yeah, like I said, they're one of the first protocols that uh, engages with this carbon kind of carbon transfer and carbon trading. Uh, they recently started using the Oracle probably, uh, it's actually been for a few months, but their TBL is really starting to grow now. So we're excited to see that. And um, they're taking a multi-chain based approach starting soon. So we hope to be um, securing them on multiple chains. And then the fourth and final product spotlight we're gonna showcase is the staked ETH pool which has uh, 300,000 in total deposits on Ethereum mainnet and it taps into the Lido staked ETH uh, protocol and basically uh, very similar to the pool together protocol that um, pays out rewards every day based on yield generated through something like Aave. This is actually generating the yield through uh, staked ETH, pays that out um, where half the payout goes to a charity and half the payout is broken into two different players. So it's very cool. It's using the WitNet Randomness Oracle. And then shout out to uh, Dr. CPU and Under the Sea, who are uh, some community members in the WitNet community and the Pull Together com to community. They came together to create this. So really excited to work with them. Uh, next up is some chains that we're planning on, or that we did integrate on, and then one we're planning on integrating on. Uh, so we added support for Ultron Mainnet, Scroll Testnet, and Elastos Testnet. Ultron is getting 16 total price feeds with eight of those being on mainnet, including uh, AVAX, BTC, ETH, MATIC, USD, and Phantom to USD. Oh, excuse me. AVAX, BTC, ETH, MATIC to USD, and then Phantom, ULX to USDT. Uh, they're also getting wrapped Bitcoin and wrapped Ether to wrapped ULX. Uh, Scroll is getting BTC, ETH, UNI, and USDC to USD and Elastos is getting their native coin to uh, USDT. So these are just price pairs. You get like Bitcoin to what's the Bitcoin price as, in, as it relates to US dollars. So some of them are a little funky because they're not to like a stable asset. Um, on the left see, here, you'll see all of our integrated chains and all of the price feeds that come with it on those uh, networks. Uh, and now we have a super exciting announcement that we're uh, really thrilled to share with you today. Um, and obviously, if you're watching this a little late, then you probably might have already seen this. But uh, WitNet is happy to be the first Oracle to go live on uh, the shiny, spanking new um, Polygon ZK EVM chain. 
So this is um, it's bolstering the decentralization of the WitNet Oracle. We expect this to really be um, ballooning total value uh, secured metrics, and obviously this is great for Ethereum. It'll help uh, scale Ethereum in a secure manner. And um, for those who want to tap into truly decentralized Oracle price feeds, WitNet will be there for them, and it'll be we have that first mover advantage, so it's great. Um, we'll now move on to the grants that we talked about uh, and that we've been signing for the last few months. Uh, the WitNet Foundation operates a grant program that funds small and larger projects as they use the WitNet Oracle. The goal of the grant program is to push Web3 adoption and grow the overall awareness of the WitNet Oracle. The foundation has funded <clears throat> over $40,000 in uh, new grants since the beginning of the program in September of 2022. Uh, well, now we're going to spotlight a few of these that we've been working on in the last few months, and we're expi- excited to show the world. Of course, we have like all these on our, our, our blog that you can kind of read a little bit more in depth. So first up, dodao.dev, which is the world's first decentralized job exchange. It's a very cool protocol that's using WitNet to verify and audit task completion on a community GitHub page. Uh, it's it's one of the first use cases that we've seen since we launched the WitNet, um, and we're super excited to help promote uh, the centralized workforce. The next grant we have uh, awarded is to Pocket Demons, which is a trading card NFT game. Um, it's a collection of 666 NFTs that are used as trading cards based on their rarity, which the rarity itself is determined by the WitNet randomness oracle, and the game allows players to wager money in Crow, which is the native Crow, uh, native coin of the Kronos ecosystem. And <clears throat> you can use five of these trading card NFTs in a head-to-head duel with another player. And the final project is uh, Digimart, which is a pay, to pay with crypto browser plugin. It's helping create mass adoption of cryptocurrency in Africa as users can tap into Digimart to use as a peer-to-peer shopping payment system for e-commerce. The goal is to become a Shopify competitor and allow websites to uh, have lower fees um, and better traffic by allowing everyone to tap into blockchain payment infrastructure. And then the final slide here is some statistics uh, that we've seen since the start of the year. So the top here in the white are um, it's it's total va- total volume total daily daily volume since the start of the year and uh, in the month of March. So. Um, the trading volume has <coughs> exponentially increased. Uh, we're at levels I don't think we've seen uh, in a few years, which is fantastic. We're super excited to see that. Um, the chart on the right there shows that it was really steady, just about the same numbers every day. And then we started to see an increase right around the time that uh, we implemented the burn mechanism w- within the WitNet protocol. And now we're up to roughly seven or eight hundred thousand dollars of trading volume a day. Um, unfortunately, these charts, I added them to this slideshow a few days uh, ago, so it's not up to date with the latest information. Um, the two charts below it are Discord um, users, Discord members are joining our server. Uh, March has seen an astronomical increase. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the start of the year was relatively quiet, and then as we started to see uh, token value increase of the Bitcoin as people discovered the actual project. They um, started joining our Discord and our Telegram, which you can see there on the right. Uh, we saw, um, excuse me, sorry about that. We were seeing a decrease in, as bots were leaving our Telegram chats, they were getting deleted and people were deleting their Telegram accounts and then we saw an exponential growth <clears throat> in the end of uh, March and early April. So we're really happy about that as well. Uh, And this, of course, thank you all for joining us. Um, I appreciate people sticking through it with uh, the technical issues that we had earlier. Um, Sorry about that. And uh, I think we might try to maintain this level in the future, but we'll have it on Discord and also see if we can live stream it on YouTube simultaneously and then have a recording on our YouTube. And also see if we can find a way to throw Twitter spaces in there. But we'll worry about that next community call. Any questions, please feel free to ask them in the YouTube comments, in our Telegram, or in our Discord. Thank you all for coming, and we'll see you in the next community call.